What's up everyone? My name is Jason from South Bay Leather Supply and today I'm going to show you how to make this mask. So stick around. Okay, good morning everyone. This is my first tutorial video, so bear with me if I mess something up. Today we're going to do a tutorial video on this mask. I'm working in collaboration with another maker. This is everything you're going to get in the kit as far as the acrylic template goes. You get all the straps, um, reinforcements, the main part of the mask. And on each part, it will tell you that you're going to need two pieces. So one piece you'll cut like this. And then another piece you're going to reverse it and cut like this. This brown is the protective paper that comes on the on the acrylic. Okay, so the ones that have numbers, like this little part, if I can get this to, there we go. So you need two, two of those. You're going to need four of these. You know, and so on. This says you need two of these. Each kit is going to come with a free set of lenses, okay, that you need for the mask. You don't have to put them in, but I mean, it makes the mask look better. Uh, these are just neon blue. That was part of the pattern, the acrylic that I had in there at the time, but you'll get a choice of color. There's clear, tint. Um, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent orange, uh, red, all kinds of different colors. So you get a choice of whichever, whichever ones you want. And then we sell extra ones on our Etsy store. They're, I think, $15 or something like that with free shipping in the U.S. So that's not a bad deal. Um, usually we ship the same day that the order is received if it's during the week. You know, Monday through Friday. Okay, so your straps are three quarters of an inch wide. The easiest thing to do, in my opinion, is use your strap cutter and just cut a strip down the hide that you're using. If there's a straight edge on it, if not, go ahead and put a straight edge on it. Um, if you don't want to do that, say if the edge is really wavy and you don't want to waste a lot of that leather on the top um, you can always cut it make a straight edge and then save that for something else um, down the lines maybe if you know you can cut out your two pieces of these that you need okay even this is this piece is three quarter and we need four of these guys so yeah, even the straight, even the strap cutter with this guy is going to be a lot easier because then you can just use your half round punch to cut the the ends out. You know, same thing. Your belt tip punch on on these guys will be a little bit easier. <clears throat> now, if if you don't have that, if you don't have a strap cutter, that's why we give you these. Just use this, use this, and and use it as your guide, and you know, cut down the, the side of it. it. It's not difficult. Um, if you use your strap cutter, you'll just have a nice long strap, you know, and cut the pieces out, mark the holes, cut the ends, it'll be a lot quicker. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get the strap cutter, get it set up, and cut these out of uh, that same black leather. Okay. Okay. I just finished up all the straps. As you can see here, they're all done. Okay, I went ahead and peeled the protective coating off of this one. Um, you don't need to. I mean, if you want to see directly where you know, you're going to cut out to make sure you don't have any blemishes, under there you can peel it off or you can leave it on.
All right, so, well, you can see I forgot to do this little V right here. Forgot to cut that out, but it, see, I already marked it with my awl, so I know where I'm going to cut it. So that's one of the reasons what helps with the marking it before you cut it if you're going to use it as a, you know, the template as a cutting guide. All right, let me just explain something to you real quick. These little pieces with these holes that have multiple holes in them, they're basically reinforcements for where these seams come together. Okay. They're going to go under here just to make the seam a little stronger. They're totally optional, okay? You don't need to have them. So if it frustrates you to cut these smaller pieces out and make these holes, don't do it. You don't have to, okay? It does make the mass stronger. It gives the threads something more to bite against, okay? So it goes underneath like so, okay, to the edge. doesn't come up to here because that's where your lens goes. There's one on each side. <clears throat> and this guy is the long one that goes in between here, okay? It goes underneath also. So when this this is going to, you know, come together in the front and it's going to bend down to go around your chin. This will go underneath it to reinforce it. But like I said, it's optional. You don't... All right. So we got we got the holes all punched out as you can see here. All right. So we'll set this off to the side for now. Right there's a good spot. Bring our leather back over here. Okay, and we're gonna do this guy. All right, so I went over to my other workbench and I burnished all these edges um, around the bottom of the mask. Okay, and then the top part of the mask here and around this part of the bottom. And then the, the cheek area, of course, too. All right, I still got a bunch of the holes in these. And we'll do that in a minute, but Right now, we are going to set some rivets, I'm sorry, some grommets. <clears throat> right, so we're going to use two that are the same size for these top two holes, okay? That's what we got, so that's what we're going to use. It doesn't really matter, so I'm going to do one or two on camera and then do the rest off camera. Okay, uh, this isn't, this is just a folding table, so I don't know how well this is going to go. It's not very solid. Mm, just kind of crooked. <clears throat> oh, that's it. All right, in the back side. Okay, um, what I'm going to do with this guy is on the instructions, the paper instructions, these holes, like I was telling you, have a, a piece of brass or copper pipe, like a pipe cap that go in here for decoration for, for this um, steampunk look which is cool, but I don't have those on hand. Um, I don't want to run to the hardware store to get those. So what I decided to do is I'm going to cut a piece of red goat skin, just, you know, really thin. I think this is one and a half ounce. And I'm going to glue it behind there to just give it 
a red look. I think that'll be cool. Now, you could do it without this piece altogether and just put rivets in these holes, and that would look cool. Or, if you don't want to do the red inlay or another piece of inlay, don't punch these holes. You can do, you know, whatever you want. But first, first things first, <clears throat> we need to, to stitch this up here to get that closed, and then we're going to put those rivets in, okay? So I'm going to do that, and then I'll bring you back, uh, and I'll probably go ahead and trim these out and get these glued in. I got my little glue bottle and my whatever this thing is, little spatula, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here's what I did. I used the clear template and I just kept moving the pattern, moving it a little bit and then I would trim it and bring it back up, see where I would need to trim it next and just use the, you know, the edge of the template, trim it and keep going until I got it about where I want. So I could probably uh, trim off some excess there um, so once you make one, you can make another, just flip it over, like so, and then kind of trace it out. And So this is going to be half hidden, so you can decide if you want to do an X on the outside or just straight across. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know that I'm probably going to end it up at the top and not on, I guess this is where the cheek is going to be. So you're going to want to hold it together. All right. And then I would go through here. You know, go back through the same holes. I'm not going to teach you how to stitch uh, because everybody's got their own way of how they like to do it. And this is my way. So yeah. So we're going to do an X on the outside and just keep that consistent all the way through. So it's going to look something like that, okay? You can see it. Yeah. Let's kind of straighten it along as you go and keep it kind of taut. this stitched up and then we'll come back and set some rivets okay yeah you don't have to murder it I always just try to spin it. If it doesn't spin, it's good. You know, just again, I'm using this. This is a small mall. 
and it works fine for these. They're not super heavy duty. This is more of decoration. This is decoration. That's what. All right, I went ahead and got the thread started here. We're going to do the same pattern, the X. All right, and I do have that reinforcement backer piece, if you want to call it, in there. You can see the back side of the rivets. All right, so we'll go ahead and stitch up a few holes on camera, and then we'll do the rest off camera. So there's no use of watching me sit here and sew. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do the top now. We have to close up the sides here. Those little reinforcement pieces are going to go in there. Don't forget that they don't go all the way to the edge because you got to leave room there for the lens. You might have to trim it back a little bit. Okay. So there's two of those that you made. And then one here that goes in the forehead. I recommend starting in this corner just because it's easier to line it up right in this, uh, you know, in the corner here. Because you can line it up on the lens really easily. And it's just like, it's just like sewing anything else really. Like a typical saddle stitch. Alright, both lenses are in. As you can see, that red is pretty cool, I think. Now we're going to attach the straps to the top piece. You have a choice. Uh, you can do, do it however you'd like. But there's these little tabs that you made four of go into the top and bottom of the mask. They're going to hold the strap on. So you can either put D-rings up here like a three-quarter inch D-ring, or I'm going to use um, slides. Okay, that side's finished up. Um, I started from the middle and worked my way out. And then just back stitched one hole. And now we're going to go over to this side. My neighbors just got here, <clears throat> and they got a couple new Harleys, so... I apologize now if there's going to be any noise in the background. I'll try to cut it out, but hopefully there won't be. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that the uh, washer for the grommet fell off. That was the one that was giving me the problems in the beginning. So we'll have to fight that one and get it out and replace it. No big deal. All right. So let's just trim that back, get that out of the way. Run those back. There we go. Pretty cool, right? Pretty damn cool. So now the next step is going to be the straps. All right. buckles, three quarter inch buckles, our two straps. Let's move the mask to the side for a minute. So we have to set these. Now these guys <clears throat> on the pattern, the template, there's a couple holes here. One on either end and you can put the holes in there to put a small rivet in there. 
that's how he has it on his um, photo instructions on the PDF. So, but what I'm going to do, or you can you can sew it. But again, because we're running way past what I thought this was going to take, and it's super hot in here, and I can't turn the fans on because it'll make way too much noise for the video. So we're going to take our handy dandy craft tool, heavy duty supersonic stapler, and just like so. That's what this thing is made for. It's made to staple leather, okay? And I know you're probably thinking, oh, that's that's shitty. Why are you doing it like that? You should do it with a rivet or do it with stitching it. And like I said, I'm just trying to get the video done for you guys and go home and have dinner. Okay. That's the easy way out. <clears throat> Besides, that's going to be hidden under there. Okay? Just like in a belt. So now, let's rivet this guy together. A couple double cap rivets. That's way too long. Let's get something a little shorter here. That's better. Okay, that's one. There's two. those holes a little on the close side. Don't forget this guy. If you have a, <clears throat> the metal loops, you can put those in. I, ha I was going to use some of those, but since I'm showing you how to assemble this pattern, I figured I'd use what came with the pattern. So that's what we're using. And they look good. Nothing wrong with them. I didn't burnish them or edge them or anything like that, which I probably should have, but I didn't. So, let's just set these real quick. <clears throat> now these guys are going to go on the mask, okay, and they get riveted on also. Maybe it would have been easier to do that first and then rivet these on? I don't know. I don't know. I think it'll be fine either way. I like to pre-bend those a little bit so that's kind of got the side going, the, the bend going already. And that, my friends, is our mask. It is assembled. Okay. Now, do me a favor. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the tutorial. And also, give me a like. Why not? Give me a like. And a subscribe. Because I'm going to have more tutorials coming out for... Uh, more mass patterns, wallet patterns. Like I said, we're going to have tutorials for um, Craftsman Gus. Uh, he's in Thailand. We're making some of his patterns into our acrylic templates also. And then we have a lot of his templates from this same maker. I'm sorry I can't pronounce his name and I don't want to butcher it. <clears throat>
but he's got some really cool uh, different things. He's got a, a handbag the shape of a skull. Okay, that it's it's pretty badass. And then he's got a set of goggles with this shape of lenses instead of just the typical round lenses. All right. I mean, it's different. It looks cool, right? And he also has the typical round ones also, and we're going to do those also because, you know, some people might like that. But he has a couple other full face masks, some Plague Doctor masks, um, a lot of cool stuff. Some mini Plague Doctor, a few different mini Plague Doctor keychains that we're going to do. Uh, those should be pretty cool, fun, good for the kids. But yeah, give me a like, a subscribe, hit the bell. I don't know why they say that for the notifications. So, yeah. Thanks again. I appreciate it. And uh, have a nice day.